subject physics chapter quantum physics topic numericals on de broglie wavelength in the last class we studied about theory about de broglie's hypothesis and we find out that de broglie stated that for every matter there is a wave that exists now we'll be studying some numericals based on de broglie's hypothesis to just begin with numericals let's first summarize the de broglie's formula and then we'll be going ahead with numericals so the summary says lambda is given by h upon mv you already know this h is planck's constant m is the mass of the object and v is its velocity combined together you can also call mv as moment it's also called as momentum represented by p also you know that momentum can be easily recognized as product of kinetic energy and mass so the same formula could be reiterated as h upon 2m under root k well you can use any of the formula depending on the question to solve out for the de broglie's wavelength the question in here would majorly be in terms of finding the de broglie's wavelength so the first question let's go here it says find the wavelength of a cricket ball so here the object is a cricket ball which is having mass of 500 gram of course in si unit it would be 0.5 kg moving with velocity of 50 km per hour now since this is 50 km per hour it is not in the si unit we need to first convert this into meter per second which is the si unit now you all know the conversion it's 50 km per hour multiplied by 5 over 18 well the velocity on solving comes out to be 3.89 meter per second now using the formula lambda is equals to h upon mv using the formula lambda is equals to h upon mv substituting the value of h as 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by mass of the cricket ball which is 0 0.5 multiplied by velocity which is 13.89 well if you solve it further you will be getting 0 0.95 times 10 to the power minus 34 now let's talk about the significance and about the statement that why de broglie's hypothesis is not generally considered in real world objects now well if you imagine a ball it is of a substantial size of course true we have already seen a ball it is of a substantial size now if you see the wavelength of course the unit would be meter the wavelength is of the order of 0 0.95 into 10 to the power minus 34 so you can actually say that the wave is equal to negligible why negligible because the wavelength is so small so small that it can be ignored for real world objects now how it could be a substantial figure it could be substantial figure only if either the mass is very less which exists only in terms of subatomic particles or the velocity should be very high as we discussed already in the theoretical class so these are the two cases where your de broglie hypothesis stands true in the picture well this was all for numericals now next numerical says find the wavelength of course the de broglie wavelength for electron now here the particle is electron having an energy equals to 100 electron volts now here of course we need to use the second formula which states that lambda is equals to h upon under root of 2m times kinetic energy now well just substituting the values my value of h is 6.62 times 10 to the power minus 34 divided by root over 2 times now you know mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 so it's 9.1 times 10 to the power minus 31 the energy should be in si unit so we would be taking 100 and we would be multiplying it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 to convert the whole energy into joules 
on solving further of course you can use your calculators constant methods to solve the numericals and on solving you would be getting the value as 1.22 times 10 to the power minus 10 meters which is approximately around 120 Armstrong this value is approximately 120 Armstrong so here you can see the wavelength is quite comparable as terms with respect to the size of electron and hence in subatomic particles the de Broglie's hypothesis stands out to be true now let's take another numerical this question reads as find the de Broglie wavelength of a an electron accelerated through a potential difference of 182 volts okay so here you have accelerated that electron using a potential difference of 182 electron volts sorry 182 volts which is nothing but as V and 1 kg object here the mass is 1 kg moving with the speed of 1 meter per second this is of course the V again now comparing the result explain why the wave nature of matter is not more apparent in daily observations now again we have two cases A and B in both of the cases we need to find the de Broglie's wavelength so let's take a case into consideration here we are given potential difference so of course we'll be using the formula for kinetic energy so here the lambda equals to h upon under root of 2 m k e so substituting the value of h is 6.62 times 10 to the power minus 34 divided by root over we have 2 into mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 as stated earlier multiplied by kinetic energy now to find out the kinetic energy you just need to multiply this charge with your voltage you need to remember the formula that energy is nothing but as q times v or charge times the potential so which is again 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 times 182 well on solving this you would be getting value as 0 0.91 Armstrong well this is the value that you are getting for lambda now well for the second case we have lambda is equals to h upon mv here value of h is 6.62 times 10 to the power minus 34 divided over here the mass is 1 kg and so velocity is also 1 meter per second so it comes out to be around 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 meters now here you can actually see and imagine that for a ball whose mass is 1 kg and velocity is 1 meter per second your wavelength is very small it is rather negligible with respect to the size of the object but in this case here the wavelength or the de Broglie's wavelength for the moving electron is comparable to the size of the electron itself and hence this makes a quite good difference in terms of modern physics whereas this is ignored the reason being this is incomparable with the size of the object and that is the reason or that is the sole reason why the wave nature of matter is not more apparent in daily observations thank you so much for watching this video for more content stay tuned with ikeda and subscribe to ikeda